Hello guys, Florin here. Welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to create a dead jokes generator using JavaScript. You can use this to play the don't laugh challenge with your friends. But be warned, it might get addictive. We're going to build it using the I can has dead joke API, which randomly sends out a joke every time you call the API. All right, so let's get going. Alright, so here we have an empty CodePen project and the first thing, let's build the HTML markup. We're going to have a container which will be basically that white box you saw and inside it we're going to have the text and uh, the button which will get the new joke every time we press it. So here we'll have a heading which will say don't laugh challenge. And the second thing will be a div with an ID of joke. And we're going to use this ID to target the div in the JavaScript and add the joke inside. And also let's add a class of joke so we can target it in the CSS and style it. So basically here goes the joke. And then the last thing we're going to have a button with an ID of get joke and the class of btn so we can target it with the css which will say get another joke something like that okay that's pretty much it for the markup next the styling we'll have a font from google fonts and as a base css style we'll use box sizing border box on all the elements next for the body Let's give it a background color, 6A6, D3, E8, or as a zero. Okay, that's better. The font family will be the font we got from Google Fonts, serif, uh, and let's center everything in the middle, display flex, align atom center, justify content center, We'll give it a fixed height of 100 viewports heights and the margin zero to remove the remove it. And now everything is the center. Let's style the container, that white box, container, background color white. It will have a border radius, 10 pixels, padding, 5 pixels, 20 pixels, 50 pixels, sorry, 20 pixels little bigger on top and bottom and a little smaller on the left and the right. Let's center everything with fixed align center. Give it a max weight of 100% and a width of let's say 80, 800 pixels. Something like that to so the nice box here in the middle. And let's not forget about the box shadow so it will stand out a little bit. Box shadow 0, 10 pixels, 20 pixels, and the uh, dark color with a little bit of opacity. And let's add another box shadow 0, 6 pixels, 6 pixels, and the same color 0, 0 0.1. And let's format the text here. Yeah, okay. Oh, I forgot the RGBA here. Alright, so now you can see that it stands out a little bit, like it, it's getting closer to us. Okay, that's pretty much it for the container. Let's start the H3, remove the margin, increase the letter spacing, pixels, and let's play around with the opacity, like 0 0.5. So it will be like that, a little hidden in the box. All right, for the joke, so this is the text here. We're going to have a font size of 30 pixels, line height of 40 pixels. This is when we get the multiple lines, a margin of 50 pixels in top of the bottom and zero on the left and the right, and Let's keep it within uh, 600 pixels. 
case it gets bigger. And if we add that, we're going to need to change the margin zero to auto. So it will go in the center. All right. The last thing we have to do is to style the button. So the button will be, let's say, background color 9F68E0. Remove the border. Add a border radius of 10 pixels. Let's copy over the box shadow here. Maybe change the first part a little bit. 5 pixels and 50 pixels. So it won't be that obvious. The color will be white. Mm, let's add the padding of 14 pixels and 40 pixels. So it make it big and increase the font size 16 pixels. Okay, that's pretty obvious. So now when we click it, yeah, let's remove that focus outline. So BTN focus will be outline zero. I don't like it though. So. Okay, uh, and two more things. You can see that if we click it, we can't see anything happening. So let's add on the active state. Let's uh, transform it. Scale 0 0.98. So now if we click it, it will shrink a little bit. All right. And I usually add cursor pointer so people can see that it's something to click as the cursor will change. So that's it with HTML, the CSS. Now let's use the JavaScript to call the API and add in the text from the API. First, let's target the elements. So we need this uh, div. Let's look at the markup again. So we have a div with an idea of joke. And we have the button with the get joke ID. So let's get those elements. Uh, joke element will be document get element by ID joke, and we'll have the get joke button, which will be document get element by ID get joke, like that. We're going to have a an event listener on the get joke button, add event listener on the click, and we're going to call a function here. This function will be triggered every time we click, but we also want to trigger it uh, first time when the page loads, so we'll get the first joke. So for that, let's write a function function get joke, or let's make it uh, another name so it won't confuse you with the button generate, generate joke, something like that. And here we're going to call the I can has API and set the new joke. All right, and considering that we're going to use the fetch API, let's uh, convert this function to an async function, async function here. And then we're going to have to call the fetch function and pass in the URL. Okay. And we're going to store the result in a variable. Let's call it joke result. And add the await keyword for the fetch call. One thing that this API needs is to pass in the headers. 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 Like that. And we need the accept header. To be application JSON. So basically, this will tell the API that we need a JSON response. Okay, so now we have the JSON response. Let's save the joke from the await joke response.json. And now, here in this variable, we're going to have an object. Let's see what we'll have in the object console.log joke. And we need to call the function first time when it loads the function the page, and then we're going to call it again when the button is clicked. So let's see the okay. So we can see we get back an object with an ID, a joke, and a status. And basically, this is what we want. We want to get the joke inside the joke object. <laughs> so basically, the joke joke, and we're going to pass that. Joke joke inside the joke element. 
a lot of jokes in this tutorial. Okay, let's do that. So joke element that inner HTML will be joke that joke. Let's see if that works. Perfect. So now we have a joke when the page loads, and also we have a joke when the button is clicked. How can you tell a vampire has a cold? They start coughing. <laughs> that's fun. Okay. I want to read the jokes, I don't want to laugh. Alright, then that's pretty much it. Let's go over again uh, what we did. So we have the HTML markup, which is the container, this white box. Then we have the div with an ID. We're going to use this ID to target the div in the JavaScript and call the API, which gives us back a response. Uh, we convert it to an object using the JSON method, and then we store this response inside that div. Also, we have a button, which when it's clicked, we make another request to the API and get another joke and save it again. Basically, we change the inner HTML again. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now you can use this app to play with your friends and see who wins the Don't Laugh Challenge. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next tutorial. Make sure if you liked it, give it a like, subscribe and share this with your friends. Thank you very much. Bye.